I want to share some of the stuff that we've been doing at, at my former employer in Exenta. Um, um, and at a very large system at the uh, compliments of our good friends at VMware, at um, both VMworld in Vegas and VMworld in Copenhagen, I had data, a movie from VMworld in Copenhagen. And I should probably step to the mic and stop wondering, which is my habit. <clears throat> but um, we wanted to show something to the folks that they had never seen before. And uh, much of the VM, if you're not familiar with VMware customers, they they tend to be very impressed by pretty pictures and stuff. <laughs> and um, uh, but their entire world until now, analytically, exists in line graphs. And uh, obviously, line graphs are a problem, especially when you have a lot of systems going. So to kind of give you an idea, then what what, what I'll be showing you is. Um, okay, we have some line graphs. I had to put those in just because if I didn't have them, people would wonder where the heck they were. So I put them in there. But uh, then we've got um, uh, tabular data, which is all D-trace derived. It's, this is a NFS, so there's about 180 clients hitting one uh, NFS server here. And uh, these are all VMDK files, right? And then we've got you know operations. We can sort by the tables. So we got operations. We got their bandwidth, latency, um, bandwidth to late product, which actually is really darn handy to measure. And I can do all that in DTrace. Do the math there. And the reason is is that sometimes we have operations that have a large latency but are really small. So if I sort by latency, I get the wrong list. Other times I have operations like in a storage vMotion that you'll be seeing where I have a whole bunch of bandwidth going but the latency is real, real small. So I'm chewing up a lot of bandwidth but very little latency. And so we just multiply those together, get the bandwidth delay product, and that gives me something interesting to sort where I can actually say, hey, th this is a VMDK that's being hit by this client that's in this, in this manager, right? Um, and then uh, the, the graphical part that we showed that was new is is um, uh, this is a concept taken from the genomics people uh, in their circus charts. And we've got uh, the orange, um, for those of you who don't know, Nexenta's colors are orange and green. So we have the Nexenta box, um, the server as orange. This is the top 10 clients plus everybody else. Uh, the size, the height of their pi is related to the number of NFS ops. Uh, inside here is a small area graph, or bar graph really, that shows uh, read and write ratios. Um, then the color shade of green will change. This is alignment, which is another column in the table that's not shown here. And that NetApp, which is arguably one of our competitors, um, in Exenta, NetApp has a lot of documentation about VM decays and VMware and alignment and how incredibly important it is. And I've never seen that with any of my instrumentation, that there was an impact on alignment on NFS performance. So we said, well, we'll just show that to you and uh, you can judge for yourself. So uh, the shade of green is how well they're aligned. Uh, and sometimes you'll see very low latency, very bad alignment, <laughs> not surprising. Um, <clears throat> so then we've got, uh, what else do we have to show here? Oh, the cords between the server and each of the clients, the width of the cord is indication of bandwidth in the direction of data travel. And then the color of the cord is latency. Okay, so there's an awful lot of operational data that is immediately visible, but the real key to the ore graph here is there are no numbers at all, all right? So very much like Brendan's heat maps, I can look at this very quickly and have an idea of what's going on in the system across you know a large, substantial 185 clients, um, and see where the data flows are. So let me kind of get that kicked off, and this runs for about 10 minutes, but you'll get a pretty good idea of it, and um, you know fairly quickly here. Um, the uh, 
Uh, and one of the other things about this is this sort of a technique is very useful for operations. Um, for performance guys, maybe not so much. We really want to get into the D-Trace stuff, uh, the heat maps and so forth. But for operations, we really want to quickly look and say, all right, how's my system operating? Is data flowing? Um, in, the, uh, in the latency in the center, right? Red is bad, um, lighter shades are better. Um, we can see in some cases, for example, here that sample had a whole lot of bandwidth being used. Uh, here we have a lot of misalignments. So in sort of a really quick <coughs> period of time, I can very quickly glance at this chart and get an idea of how that, that NFS service is going. The entire back end is run through, through a D-Trace uh, collection and then fed into the, you know, up into the grapher. Um, which actually brings me to the, to some of the irritating things about running this sort of stuff in production. And that is um, systemic, <laughs> oh, what does that go? A systemic performance problem? We kicked you off. Um, or just uh, unresponsiveness. Systemic unresponsiveness, yes, thank you. Um, which uh, tends to, when we get busy, we get really busy and then we get kicked off, which is uh, fine. I, I'm, I can handle that to some, to some degree. Um, uh, the other thing is, is that, of course, if you have long running D trace scripts, uh, you have to actually carefully construct and test those much more than, than maybe is immediately obvious so that they keep running uh, without, um, especially when we're looking at network traffic. You know, sometimes we see a probe hit the start, but we never get the end, and then, you know, eventually you're going to run out of, out of uh, uh, was it dynamic space? Yeah, variable drops. Uh, so, you know, between those two things, it sort of limits the, the impact of really looking at great detail in some of this stuff on a purely operational perspective. Right? Um, so uh, again, I, I think those are some things we can solve in some other ways, but we want to kind of give you an idea of some of the stuff that's going on and some of our thought processes here and way, creative ways we can use D-Trace in the operational sense. Um, Is there a way to map these statistics back into the VMware infrastructure? Yes, yeah, so there is a way to map this back into VMware. They have a, a uh, REST API in VCOps so that we can basically take this information and send it back to them. <coughs> and we had discussions with them about it and um, basically they're not prepared to handle the amount and variety of data we can generate. Um, so, uh, you know, they're happy with seeing stuff like on a five minute sample. Um, a small amount of data in a five minute sample. Um, so that's really easy to, to generate and, and get back up to those guys. They'd say to us was, that's awesome, but can you kind of bring it down to just light graph level, please? Because that gives us all the information we ever want to see. So yeah. Even though they were sitting there and kind of going, hey, we've never seen some of this information before. They're just, their tool sets are just not aware of, or just don't seem to handle this sort of information. And we, we did have some interesting. Interesting discussions when we can, because we can pull apart these VMDKs, right, and tell you actually really what's going on inside the VMDK as well. And we're like, hey, we can dive down here. I can show you all kinds of crazy stuff you didn't want to know. Um, uh, and in fact, we find all kinds of strange and wonderful things uh, that maybe they're not so aware of. But you mean just by act how the the blocks are being accessed in the image? Yeah, so in a VMDK, right, I can have multiple VMs sharing it. And so you can, it's an open format, so you can actually go down another level and, and tie it together. See who's doing what. One of the other things is, is that these guys are obsessed with IOPS, right? And they're IOP this and IOP that and IOP this and IOP that. And then, you know, I look at it and I say, look, dudes, I see a very different amount number of IOPS on the server side than you do in the client. And the size of these IOPS varies widely. In fact, if you're on a Zen server, for example, it'll go from like 4K up to one megabyte. And you know, a thousand one megabyte IOPS is very different than a thousand 4K IOPS, right? And they were totally unaware of this. They're like, I'm, all I'm doing is 4K writes. And it's like, oh, you think that's what you're doing. What I'm seeing is very, very different. 
So uh, we had some eye-opening, shared, shared, interesting conversations there. Yeah, Brendan. So just so that I can understand that a bit better, what does it look like if it was completely idle? Well, in, in completely idle, right? There's a, a base level of, of of the size of the ring, okay. uh, and then the cords would be, of course, basically empty. Okay. Right. And if there's one client, what does it look like? So yeah, one client. You'll see one client. So we had the interesting thing about this. We we had all kinds of experimentation when we did this, and there you can actually have a whip whiplash effect in watching this stuff because you know if I start resizing everything and like resizing the number of slices in the pie based on load, um, then then your brain turns off and you can't grok it. It's sort of a it's very interesting human factors thing that that occurs, which is why we kind of settled here to, this is the top 10 plus everybody else uh, kind of a mode. If you got the version one video. I don't have the version one video here, but. We can you, run one up later for you. Right? Yeah, there's, there's some, you look at them and you're like, oh, I can't, that makes no sense. When did that happen? And, and it, it really is just a matter of the way we can present the data doesn't match the way your brain is gonna think about a transition. <coughs> So there, again, all these new things bring all kinds of new problems up to the surface. So anyway, um, it's something we wanted to share with you and uh, hope you find something interesting and inspiring with it. And uh, uh, I really hope Nexenta takes it and runs with it as a product. Great. So uh, thanks. And Mark is next. Thanks.